from Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. Welcome to the Daily Television Mass. My name is Bishop Robert Casson, and the televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from the Archdiocese of Toronto. Today, we begin a week of Masses for vocations. Pope Francis has declared Sunday, April the 22nd, as the worldwide day of prayer for vocations. Pope Francis shared that in the diversity and the uniqueness of each and every vocation, personal and ecclesial, there is a need to listen, discern, and live the word that calls to us from on high while enabling us to develop our talents making us instruments of salvation in the world and guiding us to full happiness. The next week of Masses will focus on different vocations. We ask each of you in our daily TV Mass community to pray for vocations in a special way. And on a Sunday, April the 22nd, we will join the rest of the world in prayer for all those who are listening, discerning, and living the call to serve God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. Sisters and brothers, let us call to mind our sins and ask God for mercy. You came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Set aside, O Lord, the bond of sentence written for us by the law of sin, which in the Paschal mystery you canceled through the resurrection of Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now during those days when the disciples were increasing in number, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution of food. And the twelve called together the whole community of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should neglect the word of God in order to wait on tables. Therefore, friends, select from among yourselves seven men of good standing, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we may appoint to this task. For while we, for our part, will devote ourselves to prayer and to serving the word. What they said pleased the whole community and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, together with Philip, Prochorus Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas, a convert of Antioch. They had these men stand before the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. The word of the Lord. Lord, let your 
mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. in the Lord, O oh, you righteous, praise befits the upright. Praise the Lord with the lyre, make melody to him with the heart of ten strings. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in The word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. Lord, let your mercy be on us. As we place our trust in you. Truly, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love to deliver their souls from death and to keep them alive in family. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. After feeding the crowd, Jesus withdrew to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because there was a strong wind blowing. When they had rowed about five or six kilometers, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But Jesus said to them, it is I, do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends, as I mentioned at the beginning of today's Mass, we are beginning a series of Masses, 
for vocations. Specifically, we are being invited to pray for certain particular vocations to the priesthood, to the diaconate, and to the religious life, all in the service of the church. From time to time, I am asked the question, what made you decide you wanted to become a priest? I suppose most priests are asked that question. For me, the answer to the question is really quite simple. There was really nothing very dramatic in my own vocation story. I wanted to become a priest simply because I felt called to be a priest. In other words, I felt that priesthood was what God was asking me to do. Of course, I was attracted to the idea of becoming a priest from childhood onward because the priests we had in our parish were wonderful people, and I wanted to be like them. Later on, I also discovered that if people want to be happy and at peace within themselves, they are better off being obedient to the will of God in their life rather than being obedient to their own will. You see, the two wills are not necessarily the same. As I was growing up, I also wanted to be a teacher. I wanted to cultivate the mind of a teacher and the heart of a pastor. So when I went to university at St. Thomas More College in Saskatoon, about an hour's drive away from my home, I was surprised to discover that the college was conducted by an order of priests called the Basilian Fathers, or the Congregation of St. Basil. These were men who actually were some of our teachers, as well as the priests. They lived together in community life, something like, but not quite, a group of brothers all living together under the same roof and all engaged in the same kind of work. That was attractive to me, so by my last year of college, I made application for admission to the Basilian Fathers, and, much to my surprise, they accepted me. Eventually, I became a priest and a teacher, then a pastor, then a bishop. But we'll have to leave that latter part for another time. Meanwhile, let's turn to the Lord in our prayer. The prayers of the faithful. For the church, especially for Pope Francis, all the clergy, and all the members of the church, for our faithfulness to the call of God, we pray to the Lord. For an increase of vocations to priesthood, diaconate, and religious life, especially in places where they are most needed, we pray to the Lord. For our special intentions, for the sick and suffering, for the homeless and hungry, for the marginalized and oppressed, and for all the faithful departed, we pray to the Lord. We lift up to you, God of love, our petitions, confident that you will hear and respond through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divine life of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, we receive truth in receive with humble and contrite heart. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me of my sin. Thank you. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctify graciously these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with all of you. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Will those of you at home please join me now in this prayer from sacred scripture. Isaiah 41, do not fear for I am with you. Do not be afraid for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. May the peace of God, which is beyond all human understanding, keep your minds and hearts in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Amen. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. On behalf of our celebrants and all of us at the Daily TV Mass, our best wishes for a restful weekend. We'll be looking for you all again come Monday. Brothers and sisters, we 